appendicitis so this is a very easy topic just try to go through all these things are there in this video so easily you will get all the points are present in appendicitis so here we can say inflammation of appendix is known as appendicitis so i hope before going with this appendicitis it is really very much important to know about the related anatomy and physiology so let's see what is in the anatomy and physiology of appendix from the anatomy of appendix we are able to see that this is a large intestine colon and in the inferior part of cecum this part is named as this part is named as cecum this one is appendix so we can see that from the inferior part of the cecum the narrow blind tube is there it is named as appendix it is named as appendix now basically we can see a bigger image of this appendix that this one is a normal one this one is a normal appendix and this one is a inflamed appendix due to various types of etiological factor it can be inflamed so we can see the size and shape and appearance of normal appendix and inflamed appendix so this one is a basically inflamed appendix here patient will feel pain in touch there will be tenderness and many more clinical manifestations patient will produce now basically in the functions of appendix we can say that there is basically no known function of appendix uh, why it is there uh, what it is working uh, it's not known so basically it's a uh, organ which is not functioning which is uh, which do not have any function and due to some etiological factors it can be inflamed and if it is inflamed if it is untreated patient can uh, it can be perforated and from that patient can develop various types of complications so the etiological factors or the etiology now from the etiology we are able to see obstruction by fecally now basically we can uh, see that wherever the food materials are coming through the small intestine and it is going to the large intestine that time it the process of fecal matters has already started so here the obstruction can be there obstruction can be here in the appendix due to the fecalid material next we will be able to see if there is presence of any type of foreign body in this appendix if kinking will be there narrowing of the uh, appendix uh, will be there or tumor of cecum or appendix tumor of this cecum or appendix will be there now these are the situations of so these are the etiological factors that can lead to appendicitis the inflammation of the appendix next the pathophysiology we are able to see now in the pathophysiology firstly you will go with your etiological factors this etiological factors already we know after that due to the etiological factors there will be obstruction naturally in the appendix there will be the obstruction and whenever obstruction will be there next time next one we will be able to see distension of the appendix it has distended normal picture of appendix and the inflamed picture of appendix is totally different so we have to remember that one and then venous engorgement is there after that it leads to accumulation of mucus and bacteria and that leads to gangrene and perforation so this is the pathophysiology of appendix next we will see what are the clinical manifestations of appendix now clinical manifestation of appendicitis now here we can see anorexia nausea pain tenderness vomiting fever now in this area as this is a inflamed appendix so naturally patient will have pain here patient will have pain in right lower quadrant this area right lower quadrant they will have pain it is also named as mac bernice point not only that in touch there will be tenderness rebound tenderness will be there along with that if this appendix has perforated that time what else we will be able to see we will be able to see fever vomiting leukocytosis distended abdomen or abdominal distension so these are the clinical manifestations we are able to see in this appendicitis now here you will be able to see the diagnostic stage or what are the diagnostic studies uh, are there now basically here we should go with uh, proper history collection and physical examination after that we will go with abdominal radiograph then ct scan ultrasound urinalysis blood test we should remember that wbc count should be checked 
leukocyte count should be checked and here neutrophil count will be high so these are the diagnostic studies can be done for appendicitis now after that management now management what is basically happening most of the cases the patients are not giving importance to the pain in abdomen they are thinking that there is a um, this is a normal one or nothing else will happen so after that what is happening most of the times most of the patients are coming into severe situation only with perforated appendix they are coming to hospital emergency department so that is why here the first management is appendectomy appendectomy is done appendectomy done can be done in two approach one can be done in open approach that means conventional approach and another can be done with the laparoscopy so laparoscopy appendectomy can be there and open approach appendectomy can be there after that uh, with this appendectomy the patients will get antibiotics after that patients will get analgesics to reduce pain or to control pain and after that obviously IV fluid IV fluid should be given to maintain the fluid and electrolyte status of the body next we will be able to see complications so if there is a perforated appendicitis so what type of complication can occur first complication can be their peritonitis patient can have peritonitis and one more thing patient can develop access so this is all about appendicitis so i hope i am able to make this disease process easier for you if you like this video don't forget to like share and comment and obviously subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you for watching